Before we start, I wanted to make a couple announcements. Number one, it's the end of my hiatus. So right now I'm catching up to all the emails and messages that was given to me during this time period. So if you had any requests or any questions, even a YouTuber's challenge, I will get to you guys as soon as possible. The second announcement is in regards of Summer of the Clones. I had to make a few changes due to scheduling conflicts and content ID. Thanks, YouTube. And other situations that just didn't allow me to have time to complete this film. Now that everything seems to have slowed down, I can put more concentration on that. So as far as when it's all coming out, that's to be determined, but I promise you it's going to be before December. Yeah, I should change it from some of the clones to fall of the clones. But until then, I do have that one mini episode out, and I've decided to call it the first five minute preview or something like that. So if you hadn't seen it, check it out. There will be more coming soon, I promise. And then my last announcement is really meant for you all. My subscribers, my fans, my family, my friends. Thank you all for all your support and giving me the encouragement and the drive to continue on doing these shows. And with that, I only have one more thing to say. Hi, Faceless here, and I'm back. Until then. Yes. Right here. It seems nowadays, Hollywood's answer to make a blockbuster movie is to throw millions of dollars at it and hope for the best. Yeah, no. The reality of it all is that the answer is a good solid storytelling and with a passion of filmmaking. Without that, you're just putting out movies that should have never left the studios in the first place. Yeah, like those. I've said this in the past, I've seen movies with little or no budget that clearly surpass some of the big budget films that we got out today. Basically what I'm trying to say is that you don't need a big budget to put your imagination and fantasy on film for everyone to enjoy. As long as you put time and hard work into it, then you may have something like the next Star Wars or Clerks on your hands. Hey boss, I got a fantasy in my head that I want to put on film, but it involves you wearing a loincloth in a steamy forest. What? What did I say? Now that's taken care of. This next review is on a movie that isn't in the theaters at all. Farewell, Famicom and Rider. A little background. Famicom and Rider is a hero that was conceived by the late Justin Carmichael, aka Juwario. Justin had intended to make a web series based on this character, even done a few reviews as the writer himself. However, things didn't go according to plan and schedule to actually film the series just kept getting pushed back. Unfortunately, on January 2014, Justin passed away, leaving behind only a small portion of his vision for the Famicom Rider. Caitlin Sacedo, aka Mars Girl, along with her husband Josh Sacedo, had been longtime friends of Justin and decided after talking to Josh Heyer from MAGFest to do a film based on the Rider's final adventure. With that, the Sacedos got together a crew of amateur filmmakers and began filming the movie. Now, they did have donations from fans of Justin, family, and friends along with whatever Caitlin and Josh were able to raise. I don't know the exact amount, I think I heard somewhere between $300 to $5,000, but it certainly wasn't a million dollar budget. The deadline that was set was the anniversary of Justin's passing, and they had planned to premiere the film at MAGFest 2015. Through blood, sweat, and tears, they were able to make that deadline, and the reception of MAGFest was awesome. Here's the brief plot to the film. The film picks up where the showdown between the writer and Dr. Holocaust left off. After the huge explosion, Mars Girl, played by Caitlin, seemed to be the only one that survived the ordeal, and the only thing left of the writer was the transformation belt and the Family Comic game pack. The bad guys of the film also monitored that explosion, and went after Mars Girl to retrieve the writer's equipment. After some fighting, the game pack gets blasted into the air to the unknown location. The only thing that was left behind for Mars Girl was the transformation belt. We fast forward three years later, where our hero Chris, played by Chris Gloria, finds the game pack at a garage sale. The bad guys, named Ages, got wind of the location of the game pack and proceeded to ambush Chris. Marsco came just in time to save Chris from the henchmen and basically starts off the adventure. And that's pretty much the start off of the plot. I'm not going to give the whole plot away, but I can tell you that the pacing of this film while it's good, it does suffer a bit of a slowdown before we go and meet Yonki J. But when you really think about it, in many ways, 
almost all adventure films kind of suffer a little slowdown. As for the acting of the film, they're not professional actors. However, they're not bad either. For example, Caitlin has a dramatic moment where her emotions of helplessness and regret really comes out. And you genuinely feel that. Chris Gloria's acting, I was surprised about. For a guy that's never acted before, he did a really good job. He sold his character as a believable guy who's reacting to the situation that's before him. So I give him props for that. But Josh Sacedo playing as the main antagonist, he did that superbly. Don't get me wrong, I like Josh, but for this role, I hated him, and I was more than happy to see him get his up and comings for this film. The special effects of this movie is what you would expect from a low budget internet film. They use what they needed, and for the most part with the low quality and the editing, they managed to do it really well, and it wasn't distracting at all to the overall film. Hell, I'll go as far as saying that out of all the movies that were made for YouTube, the effects were pretty damn good. The fighting in the film? I'm not gonna lie, they were choreographed pretty damn well. I mean sure, there were parts of it that was kinda campy, but campy in a very good way and very entertaining. And I have to compliment the parts that they have, the Famicom Rider, and even Yonki J, they did really well. I mean, it had me believing that Justin was still here, especially at the end. When they had, um, not trying to give out any spoilers to this, where they had a stand-in for Ju Wario himself. For a moment, for a moment, I believed he was there. And I'll admit, I got a little misty eyed towards the end. As for the story itself, it's an adventure movie with plenty of subtle messages within it. Messages of self-doubt, believing in yourself, and never giving up on yourself. There's even a message of regret whether you did the right thing to begin with. There's even a parallel of people blaming themselves for loved ones passing, wishing you could have done more. And finally there was a message of letting go of the past and learning to forgive yourself. Overall the film closes with Justin's famous speech of you're not stupid, which was a fitting end to this film. This movie was made for the fans, and they even gave the opportunity for some of the fans to make a guest appearance on the film. That's right, I was there too. Ultimately, this film was made with the hard work and the love for a man who had touched so many lives, family, friends, and fans alike. It's a great tribute film, and it certainly deserves more credit than it already has so far. Props to Caitlin, Josh, and all the fans and friends to help make this project come to reality. So here it is, my final recommendation. If you're a fan of Juwario, or even know him through the Channel Awesome films, or even through his own channel, you can play this.com, then this is something you should watch. Well, this wraps up this episode. If you have any thoughts, please leave a comment below. And as always, you can find my previous episodes and gameplay episodes on peanutbutterdisaster.com, where you'll find other reviewers with great content. So, check them out. Guys, can I come in now? Uh, hold on one sec. Alright bud, when you pitch an idea, don't say it's a fantasy because it just makes things awkward. Yes sir. Now you have a story involving me in a loincloth in a steamy forest. Yep. Am I stranded on an island? Uh, no. Am I lost? Uh uh. Please tell me it's not some kind of horror flick. Not really boss. Okay, I give. What is it about? Well, have you ever heard of Brokeback Mountain? Oh, for crying out loud boss, come on, hear me out. Peanut butter disaster. <laughs>